Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today being on a Saturday, we came here at St. Austin to have a conversation with Coach Jonathan. Uh, so, hope you guys enjoy the conversation and maybe you learn one or two things. So, welcome Coach. Maybe you tell us more about yourself first. Yes, just like uh, Brian has introduced me, Coach Jonathan. I've been uh, coaching since uh, 2014. I coached, uh, started St. Austin's in 2017, but before that I was at Oshol Academy. I started off with uh, 11 years and under, but now I do up to uh, under 19 and I coach both boys and girls. I work in a school setup, but mostly my focus is on football. Thank you. Uh, so maybe coach you tell us, uh, what are the reasons that you are interested in the coaching role? My main interest in the coaching role is teaching a child how to do something then you see it executed and done well and football is a lovely game to watch everyone loves it even those who uh, can't play at least uh, enjoy uh, the ball being kicked and a goal being scored that's what i enjoy most about it so you've uh, you've told us uh, the reason why you're interested in the coaching role and uh, my other question is, what does it take for one to uh, maybe pursue the coaching uh, career? What does it take for one to be a coach? Uh, it takes a lot to be a coach. First, you need a, a, the education behind it. Like for me, I did um, a degree in, in PE, Bachelor of Education PE, but it cuts across all, almost all the sports. Uh, apart from that, I did other coaching co courses, um, FKF, um, you start from D license, going all the way up, and some other coaching courses like uh, KNVB, there was the basic one which you, you can do. Um, I also did with uh, Total Soccer Methods, it's from Holland, and you learn various things about uh, football. Each country has its own philosophy, um, like Holland have their own philosophy, Spain have their own philosophy. When you bring those together, you get a platform whereby you can uh, impart some knowledge into the the children and also the youngsters so that they can become uh, footballers. But basically you need to have also the passion to be a football coach. You need to have um, the, the determination to see a player improve, be promoted, to move to the next level. You must also have the desire to win and also the patience to let these uh, young ones um, grow. In the in the field of sport, uh, we all know that coaching is not an easier role. What are some of the challenges that you do experience on your daily basis as a coach? Um, like sometimes players might come late, and so uh, other challenges. May you tell us more about the challenges and how you do? Yeah, one of the uh, most uh, challenging is that every player is an individual. Everyone comes with their own baggage and you have to deal with that as a coach to bring it as a team. Um, one of the few challenges that we face is that um, players are good, sometimes are very good, but they, are not, they don't give you time to impart knowledge into them. They think they know all that. And then you have other players who are not good and bringing that, uh, bringing that balance to those uh, two players, those two different players, one who's good, one who's not good, it uh, becomes as a challenge because you have to challenge both of them. The good one, bring up challenge that is up to him. If you bring that uh, good challenge to this one who's not so good, he might be demotivated. So you must strike a balance. But one of the most, uh, most uh, challenging things is um, sometimes players um, think football is only just playing the field, but off the field, also your behavior determines how you'll be playing in the field. Um, you find some players are in discipline. They come late, um, they come um, uh, maybe disorderly and they still want to play or they just want game time without any training. Yet sports is all about discipline, every time being consistent in training, listening to your coach, playing as a team, working as a team. Yeah, so like one of them you said players coming in late, maybe they have other distractions, especially with boys usually from teenage, it's because of girls, they will come in late. Um, if maybe it's the youth player, maybe it's because of other commitments, family commitments, that uh, becomes a challenge. Sometimes it's even the challenge of the parent disallowing the player to come for training. Yeah. 
So what kind of strategies and how is your routine as a coach from Monday to Sunday as a coach? What do you do and how is your training uh, schedule? Okay, so, uh, since I'm in a school setup, um, for coaching, like I was in charge of the under 15 and under 13 team. So Monday to Friday, we have uh, two training, I mean, we have training sessions, uh, either morning and evening, but I train mostly um, Monday to Friday. So like Monday, 6.30, uh, um, 4 to 5 p.m., I have the under 15. Tuesday morning, again, I have the under 15 from 6.30 to 7.30. In the evening, I take the under 13 from 4 to 5. So each day, um, you need to have time and at least three sessions with each group, which age, uh, age group, so that you can be able to meet the fitness um, uh, criteria, plus also the element of repetition that they get used to playing uh, together. Then Saturdays usually have an open training from uh, 9 o'clock till 11 o'clock, open for all ages, and this is whereby we work on the individual skills, um, the ball control, shooting, passing, individual skills. But the rest there is based on the team effort, working as a team. Uh, you've said that you handle different age groups and age sets. That must be some tiring kind of job, right? How do you normally make sure that you are staying motivated in your job, that at some point you don't feel like it's time to quit the job? That's too much work, but how do you manage to keep motivated? Um, I think what keeps you motivated is um, the player's determination, one of them. If the players are committed towards the training and are also playing, that, that motivates you as a coach. Then the matches that you get, if you have, um, let's say, a match every week, you are training towards something, you have an objective. And then when you play the match, maybe you lose, you're motivated to play the next match to be to improve. If you win the next match, you're motivated to play the next match. But the main motivating thing is um, tournaments which come towards the end or the final weeks of the term, and whereby you get to, now is when everything is put to the test. Your goalkeeper, your defenders, um, your tactics are put to the test because each and every team has been doing the same thing. I've uh, been training and also you, your team has been training, so who is the best? We recently had uh, an under-12 Braceside tournament. Our team was uh, second place. We lost in the finals uh, due to penalties. But um, so far, the team managed to, out of a total of seven matches, six clean sheets, um, scored only one goal in the group stage, lost only one match in the group stage, that is what is motivating, and when you see the players giving their all. Uh, as a coach, you've coached for so many years, let's say so. Maybe you tell us uh, some of your achievements as a coach. What have you achieved uh, in your span as a coach? And what are the lessons that you can take from what you've lost, and also the lessons that you take from what you won? Um, my achievements as a coach today are quite several because uh, working in international schools every time you have football tournaments. I'll start with the boys. I started off with under 10, uh, which we had a tournament in Port House. That was, no, actually I'll start with internship when I was uh, doing internship. Uh, we had a Braceside tournament again, which is common, which we became first position. Uh, I was coaching that team. Um, also various teams in Oshol, whereby we managed to um, mostly second place. There's a team which is tough, Aga Khan uh, Academy. I lost three finals to them, three consecutive finals. Yeah, yeah, it's so painful to lose three consecutive finals to a team. But if they are better, you have to accept. But moving on to St. Austin's, I managed here to coach both boys and girls. Girls, we are a uh, 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 force to reckon with because under 17, we have scooped that uh, title twice under 15 once, uh, under 13 once, um, and basically those players, we have grown from under 11 because they started off from under 11. So the number of years that have been here, they've been winning. For the boys here in St. Austin's under 15 in 2019, we were champions, okay, we were champions. Uh, under 19 we went to RVA, that is Rift Valley Academy, where we had schools like uh, uh, Brookhouse, schools like Peponi, schools like ISK, um, uh, 
St. Andrews Turi, RVA, which we were second again. We lost uh, final against RVA. Um, then basically those mainly are the, but we are always in the middle bracket. First, second, first, second. Yes. Uh, that must be a good uh, CV that you have. Uh, maybe you tell us some of the core values as a coach. What do you, what are your targets as a coach? Early in the morning when you leave the house, what do you want to achieve by the end of the day? What do you look at at a player? What does a player need to do so that he may convince, he or she might convince a coach? Because there are players that are good, but there are some qualities that they lack, such as discipline. So maybe you highlight some, and maybe for the players who are watching, maybe to get to learn one or two things. Um, I'll tell you one, one secret for a coach. Uh, if you want to be always in the starting lineup for the coach, one discipline. If you have the discipline, that can take you anywhere. Actually, in any field, once you have the discipline, it will take you anywhere. Number two, hard work. That hard working player. There's a quote that says, if a coach constantly keeps on reminding you, work hard, work hard, don't be surprised if you are substitute or you are bent, or you are not selected for a player who's working hard. So, one, discipline. Two, hard work. That commitment, that consistency. Yeah. We have had players who are not that talented, but they have won numerous things, and you wonder how they are at the to that top level. It's because of that discipline and consistency and um, that commitment towards the training. Another thing is about um, following the coach's instruction. Yes, sometimes the coach might put you in a position that's not yours, but just obey for the time being, do what is required. There's a reason why. Sometimes he needs you to fill up. Uh, a position uh, that um, other players cannot step up to that role. But, um, main, but my main focus is that this player is disciplined, becomes a better player, improves. So apart from that discipline is improving every day. Today, maybe um, out of 10 shots, 9 were off target. Next time come, at least the number should go down, off target, off target, until we get on target. And as also teamwork the team spirit play a fair game if you win well and good stay humble if you lose congratulate the opponent because it's not every time you can be winning and it's not every time you'll be always be losing if you've been training yeah so <clears throat> in kenya we've been having i can say that you have less academies here in kenya you say that you have going to school to school uh, in the FKF, you've also schooled uh, the Spanish tactics and also the Holland tactics. Maybe you tell us more about what are the criteria that they do use abroad that we are lacking here in the country. What do they do outside that here in Kenya is also lacking to nature the talent that we have? Uh, it's not that we have little, uh, less academies. Academies are so everywhere. You go to any place, you'll find youngsters playing. Even uh, in the slums areas, you'll just find, if they, as long as there's a piece of uh, land there that is not being used, there'll always be players there, and you'll always find a, a coach, whether trained or untrained, will always take time to teach the young ones. Now, the challenge that we have here in Kenya is that um, when it comes to the basic course, um, so many are enrolled. You find so many enrolled, about 6,000. But now when it comes to the next level, you want to go to CAF C, uh, that's uh, the C license, uh, the C level. You find they put a, a, a number, a cap, 30. So you find this 6,000, before this 6,000 players re is reached, um, before 30, 30 every year, it takes a long time. By the time the 6,000 players, I mean, uh, coach is reached, He's already passed 10 years into that field. So there's a lot of flooding, I mean, a, a little bit of um, restrictions. Then um, uh, educated uh, coaches equals to educated players. So in England, actually, no, it's Spain. Spain, when they won the Euro Cup, I mean, the World Cup 2010 and Euro Cup 2012, what they did is actually they, they educated over 2,000 coaches. And if you have 2,000 coaches who are professional, reaching up to the B, let's say B, B, B license uh, category, and they're working in the academies, wouldn't you get a, a, a flood of players that 
you are spoiled in choosing who you can um, who can play for you so that's the challenge that we have many academies but um, not very many uh, coaches are educated some of them are just mentored do this do this others is just by um, let's say that natural born leader but that can only take you so far even if you 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 are a natural born leader and you um, you are up against a coach who has done the academy for many years and done the courses for many years it's very hard for you to win because football is systematic there are laws which you have to you have to obey in the game you can't just come and say because my players can kick a ball it's okay sometimes teams win by strategy and that's why you can find a team has 400 passes 20 shots on target no goals and the team has one shot on target one goal three will, yeah three points and they win so it's not about um just kicking the ball and all there's also this uh, mental aspect so maybe coach you tell us your last statements about uh maybe yourself maybe you wrap up uh, you wrap it up um personally i love football i love coaching um it's one of the most satisfying jobs i've ever had seeing players even apart from just the winning aspect of it seeing players change in terms of behavior the parent comes and tells you my son has changed every morning he's the one to wake me up to go to work uh, take me to school I want to go and play and he's coming on a uh, different person when class teachers uh, subject teachers come and tell you this boy has really changed he's really putting out a lot of e effort it's really satisfying apart from that when you see growth in that player in that you are coaching him in an academy and now he's moving to the next level like you playing for the youth in AFC it, it, it's really satisfying seeing that I, I had something to put in this uh, player and um, also one last thing I would like to just to urge everyone is that um, if you are an inspiring, uh, aspiring coach get to do the courses look for them um, pay whatever amount is required because it will really help you uh, you have heard of the achievements maybe some of you might think that, that those are just uh, things are made up it's, it's, the, it's the reality it's the reality but only those things can only be achieved if you have put sacrifice into it, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of education into it. Um, you have players who are willing to play for you and understand um, your system of play, and that's how you'll move on to the next level. But if you're a coach and you just say, I'll just uh, sit there and not uh, do any more, you're just rigid. You have to change. You have to change. I have, I have had teams whereby you can play all attacking football, then comes another time you have a new crop of players you have to play all defending it's part of uh, the process so it's a process a cycle yeah so that was it from coach jonathan hope you guys will like the video and also make sure you drop a comment uh, on the coach you like us to interview in the next episode so make sure you do like share and also subscribe see you guys in the next episode